Hello guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are having a good day so far. In this video, I have another math coding project to show you, in case you may want to use it in your math class one day. And if you get caught using it by one of your math teacher, then you can blame it on me because I was the guy who taught me how to build it. So let's get right into it. So on my right hand side, I have this calculator. It's a square root calculator, so if I typed 4 and then click calculate, it will calculate the square root of 4, 2. And if I click calculate again, it will take the square root of whatever number it is after 2, and then so on. And as you notice, it, it doesn't go beyond 1, go below 1, because that's not how it works. Because if any number smaller than 1 multiplies by each other, it won't get a number larger than 1. Anyways, let's get right into the video. So. First, I'm going to get rid of all this source code and start from scratch so I can explain to you guys what each line means. And I'll generate my boilerplate code and within my body tag I'll create a container. So I'll give it a div. I'll create a container and give an ID of container. And inside of that container I'll create a div with the class of main. And inside of that div I'll create a form and give a class of calculator form. It's kind of similar to my calculator that I built in my other videos. If you haven't seen that yet, you can go check that out right now. I'll have it linked in the cards or the description. Or maybe both, we'll see. But now I'll give it a name of calculator form. And inside of that form, I'll create a div, another div. So it's kind of like divs within divs, which is called nested divs. And I'll give this a class of screen and inside of the screen div I'll create an input and its type will be text name equals screen and the ID will be screen as well and below the screen div I'm gonna create a few divs with the same class name the first one will be div class equals BTN so this is where we can start creating our keys on our calculator. So if I refresh, all this should go away. Yep. So now all we have is this empty screen. And inside of this class, I'm going to create an input and give it a class of button, button, primary. And I'm going to go grab my boots bootstrap link. So I'll paste it, copy it, and then paste it in here. So rel equals style sheet, href equals this, the link, and now we have our first button, but we want to give it a type of button, and the value will be 1, and the name of it will be num1, and on click, so when you click on it, it will run this function which I'll call value button, so whatever the value of the button is, and the parameter I'm going to pass for it is this, the this keyword. It can be confusing to say sometimes, but there we go, and now we have our one key. We can copy this down a few more times, so one, two, three, four, five, I'm going to stop at five, and you'll see why. So two, three, four, five, six, this will be, no, this will stay one, two, three, four, five, six, and everything else stays the same, so we refresh. All these buttons look similar except they have different numbers. That's all. And now I can create my next row of buttons, but first I have to type BR and then create a div with the same class of BTN. And inside of this div I'll copy and paste this five times, and I'll change the value of this to six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. And this will be six, seven, eight, nine, zero. I hope you guys are starting to get the pattern because all I'm doing is just copying and pasting and modifying it a little bit to match its number. So here we have our second row and then below that one I'll create one more div. So div class equals btn and inside of this div uh, I'll create a button as well and give it a value of calculate and, but and the type will stay button but the name will be called calculate and the on click function I'm gonna change it instead of value button it's gonna say calculate so it's gonna calculate whatever we typed into the input field into the screen and now we're done with our HTML we can get started with the CSS so 
So I'm gonna create my two style tags. And the first thing I'm gonna style is my, my browser. So background image, I'm gonna use linear gradient. And I want the background to go at an angle. Well, not an angle, but I want it to go to the right. And then I'll do RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.3. And if you're wondering what this A controls, it controls the opacity of the background. So if you increase it, the opacity will become more clear. But if you decrease it, it'll become more inconspicuous. That's one way I could, you could put it. And after this color, I'm going to give it another color. RGBA 0, 0.255, 0, 0 0.3. And I'm going to put my semicolon. Then I'll do background repeat. And actually, I'm going to show you what the background looks like beforehand. Okay, good. We don't have to use background repeat. In case it repeats, we can use background repeat and type no repeat. So now we, yeah, see? But we don't want that but we can just keep it until we just give it a height of 440 pixels it does the same thing and then i can get the everything selector and give everything a font family of sans serif and for my main class if i can spell it correctly i'm going to give it a margin left of 340 pixels part Position relative top 20 pixels display flex calculator form border one pixel solid black padding 10 pixels background image will be linear gradient once again just like the body and to right RGB 95, 88, 88, and the next color will be RGB 51, 45, and 45. So now we have our rec our rectangular calculator in the center of our browser. Perfect. And then, underneath my calculator form, I'm going to stop my button class and move it to the left, move it bottom one pixel. And for my button input, I'm going to give it a border radius of 5 pixels. And the border will be 1 pixel solid black. And when you hover over it, I'm going to type input button input hover. The background color will change to this bright green color, which is chartreuse. And for our, for our calculate button, we gave it an ID, so I'll type calculate button. I'm going to do position okay so it's right here right now so if I do position relative then do left 47 pixels it should move oh we just forgot to give it an ID so I can do that real quick. D is calculate button okay and then for our screen for our screen I'm gonna do position relative left 6 pixels and actually, I'm going to make my main a little larger, so I'll do height, maybe 200 pixels should be enough. And move our calculator button a bit. So it shouldn't be left, it should actually be right. And bottom, move it to the bottom, so I'll use top, I don't know, maybe 80 pixels, I'm just eyeballing it. Okay, how about 50? Okay, that's a little better. And our button, I want to move it left a little more. So I'll do, I'll increase this number to maybe 80. Not enough. I think 130 should be enough. A little more, maybe 160. Okay, but for some reason, everything's not aligned, but that's okay. At least it looks decent. And now we can get started with the JavaScript. So. I'm going to create my functions, my first one being value button, obviously, value button, put E for my parameter, and I'll do calculator form.screen.value equals plus equals, so you can add more numbers to the screen, E.value, 
So now if we test it out, if we click one, it should appear on the screen. Yep, everything's working perfectly. That's great. And we can also create another function which says calculate. And it doesn't need any parameters. It's just going to do calculator form dot screen dot value equals math dot square root. And inside of the parentheses, inside of this method, I'm going to do calculator form dot screen dot value. So basically what this is saying is it's going to take the square root of whatever we typed into the screen. So now I'm pretty sure we should be done. So the square root of 4 should be 2. Yes. Okay, good. It's working. And yeah, this wraps it up for the video. I hope you guys had fun building this project with me and found it useful because you may need to use it one day on your math test. And also, if you get caught using this calculator by your math teacher, you can tell them that it's my fault that you were using it since I taught you how to build it. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on more exciting videos just like this. I'll be posting more fun and exciting CSS tutorials in the future, so stay tuned for that. Other than that, I hope you guys have an amazing day, and I hope to see you in my next video.